talked about a little bit this morning about what we're doing. We got a big, like a 2.5 style crankbait and um, big square bill. And we're just kind of rolling around some of these cypress trees, but as you can probably tell on the cypress trees, we got a lot of little limbs that, that, uh, that hang down and it kind of prevents you from making a cast at the tree itself. But if you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm kind of allowing the boat to, to help me get that cast and get, get that bait right up against that tree. Um, like I'll make a long cast and as my boat drifts, I can use my rod and the drift of the boat to, to manipulate that crankbait, you know, so I can bang it up against that tree. Cause you feel like that that's probably where the bites are going to be is, is on the tree. Now there's times when you can just make little roll casts on a tree like we're, we're looking at here in front of me there. You can make a little roll cast and put it right up there at it. But there's a lot of times when you can't, if those limbs are hanging down, any time that you have those, those low-lying limbs, uh, take, your, take your bait and throw it out, let the drift of the boat work that line around the tree for you instead of trying to, and use your, use your rod as well. You can, you can throw beyond the tree and then, and then take your rod and then and work the bait. You'll change that angle. You guys can see we're making multiple, multiple casts at these trees. A lot of times the fish aren't real aggressive. If you just keep making multiple casts and changing your cast angles, entice one to, to jump on that. That square build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, come here, fish. Easy now, sugar. This is a uh, yeah, a little hot. Quit, quit now. Gotcha. Now see, I want to show you guys a little something right here, how that fish has got that bait. It's outside the mouth. So a lot of times, if they're not really hitting the bait, and there's a good chance I had the other hooks on this other side. She just jumped and kind of removed them. Uh, a lot of times, that big old crankbait right there will get you a good quality fish like that. She, she, um, she hit out there on a, on a stump out here in front of these cypress trees. When you start your morning, especially if you're gonna start it on like standing timber, for instance, cypress trees like we have this morning, don't be afraid to, to make you a few fan casts out and around. There's one. That feels like a good one. Good little old fish. How about that? Easy there, sure. Pretty little old fish this morning. What what we've noticed, I've caught two pretty quick ones, and what I've noticed is they're not really relating to the visible cover. It's at probably the little stumps and and all that are that are out here away from these these visible big trees. And this morning, what we're doing, we're just we're rolling that big big square build, and that's like a 2.5 series and. Uh, like I said, puts out a, a, a tremendous amount of vibration. Y'all need to look at my rod tip when I'm reeling it back and just, just watch how much vibration that, that bait is, is actually creating. And it's, just a, it's just a really, really good early morning. Fish are probably feeding, chasing shad. We got us a little shad colored crankbait. Big line, soft rod. It's just a... Uh, perfect little combination. You know, anytime that I'm throwing a, 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 a big square bill like this, the number one thing I'm not gonna do is make big long cast. I wanna make real short cast, little, little roll cast as I can, but, but notice how 
Notice how much thump that bait has. You can you can see that rod. I mean, it's just I mean, it's lots and lots of vibration to it. You can feel it as it's vibrating really, really aggressively. I want to pull it up there against the like a piece of wood, whether it be a stump, a log, or something of that nature. Golly, how about that? How about that? I actually watched that fish come up and get that bait. I mean, my bait was literally right here at the boat. I talked a little bit about having the proper setup, and that was what you call having the proper setup. Big square bill, 2.5 kind of series. This is a Oski, uh, Jack Oski 70, 70 millimeters, which is that in that range of the 2.5. This fish hit literally right there at the boot. Now, when I'm throwing big square bills like we're doing this morning, I like to use big line. This is 20 pound gamma uh, copolymer. The difference in a copolymer and a, and a fluorocarbon line, copolymer has a little bit of stretch. I'm also using a solid glass rod. I like to have a glass rod anytime that I'm, I'm making a, a short presentation with my baits. It's a 610 medium moderate glass rod, Legend Glass, St. Croix Legend Glass. The big thing is a lot of these fish, they don't strike out there at the end of the cast it's more in the middle of the cast. So you have to have a, something's got to give. Either your hooks are going to give, your line's going to give, your rod needs to give. I would rather my line and my rod have a little bit of give to where those hooks will get a good hook penetration in that fish. When you're fishing like this and you're really close and kind of a full contact fishing, you, you kind of get jacked up and you'll start reeling a little bit too fast. This is just a, a lose tournament pro 6-8 to 1. You want this bait coming back at you at a pretty fast speed, but the high speed reels really don't allow that bait to put the vibration off that it needs to and really, you know, get in a good a retrieval rate. And that's, that's the most difficult thing to do because you're wanting to, to make cast and wanting to cover water and all, but, but realistically with a, with a bait like this, you want to be able to throw it I'm gonna say 10, 15 feet beyond your target and then reel it beside the target. Don't make a cast where you're throwing it up there right against it. You wanna be able to throw that bait beyond where you think that fish may be and then bring it back to it. Take your rod tip and just kinda of let that, lay that rod tip over that, or let your rod tip lay that line right there beside that, beside your stick up there, your standing timber. Again, just a little slow, you know, underhanded roll cast and changing, changing those directions. A lot of times we'll get you a bite. Look at there. Now I stopped that bait. I really think there was maybe some grass out there. I stopped that bait and as uh, soon as I crank, started cranking about, I started talking to you guys, stopped the bait, started it right back up and smoked it. Get the pliers out on that one. I just like a big a big square bill. I, I don't know, you know, a lot of people have, have baits, you know, square bills in their, in their arsenal. Let that one go. But something with just a little bit bigger size, bigger vibration, don't be afraid to pick up that bigger bait. There, there. Uh, same size. How about that? Easy there, hammer. Gotcha. About that. They're eating it this morning for sure. Don't always worry about sizing down. Size up a lot of times. Short cast. Varying that retrieve, varying the angles of your rod tip. Big shad profile bait, a lot of vibration. That, that one just came out here over the flat. Probably a little ditch, pretty little fish, aggressive little fish. We'll, uh, we're gonna get back over here on these cypress trees and see if we can't catch a sure enough big one. Boy, that one's mad at us this morning, isn't he? 
you know, don't be afraid to go big. As they say, you can go big or go home. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.